quorum being present, this special town meeting will come to order. The warrant for this special town meeting was signed by the Board of Selectmen on April 25, 2011. It was published in the May 5, 2011 edition of the Middleborough Gazette. It was posted by Constable Sean Joyce on May 3, 2011. Therefore, I declare that the requirements of Chapter 2, Section 3 of the General Laws, General Bylaws of the Town and Chapter 39, Section 10 of the Massachusetts General Laws have been satisfied. The moderator and town clerk have appointed the following as tellers for uh, town meeting tonight. On the left side, uh, my left, is Marilyn Hunt. And on the right side is uh, Bob Canessa. In the middle, uh, center front stage is Gail Evers. And the center right is Joanne Upham. And all of the above have been sworn in by the town clerk. This meeting will be operated in accordance with Massachusetts general laws, the town's general bylaws, and by the precedent of prior town meetings. While the town bylaws address some of the parliamentary procedures, prior town meetings have relied upon the volume town meeting time as a standard for conduct at Lakeville town meetings. It is my intention to continue this precedent. <clears throat> you will note that two microphones have been positioned in each of the two aisles. I ask that you seek recognition from the moderator. You go to one of the two microphones. There's one right down here and one right down there. You must be at the microphone to be recognized by the moderator. When recognized by the moderator, please state your name. If you would like to identify your address, address please feel free to do so. If you have a motion, please have it prepared in writing, and after stating your motion, please present it to the moderator so that the clerk will have it as part of the official record of this meeting. Unlike many towns, we have no standard relative to the length of time someone can speak. Generally, this has not been an issue. However, I will exercise my prerogatives to keep this meeting moving. If I find that the speaker repeats the same points that he or she has raised, I will ask them to refrain from speaking. Shouting from seats, booing, cheering individual speakers cannot be permitted. Any member who interrupts the town meeting in an unacceptable way will be escorted out. Such a member may not return. Do not lose your vote. Please stick to the acceptable town meeting behavior. As it has been past practice, I will allow the maker of the motion an opportunity to speak on the motion before recognizing anyone else. After the maker of the motion has had an opportunity to speak, I will seek the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Then, any other registered voter may speak on the article in question. When the motion comes to a vote, I will ask you to hold up the blue colored voting card issued to each registered voter when you arrived this evening and were checked in. During voting, you can easily determine the quantum of, during voting, if I can easily determine the quantum of vote, I will ask you to lower your card. However, if there's a counted vote, I will ask you to hold your card up during the voting and keep it elevated so that the tellers can see it and count the votes in your section. The use of the voting card will assure that only the votes of registered eligible voters are counted. Your voting card has a yes and a no printed on it. This is printed in case we have a ballot vote. We may not use it as a ballot, but we have that just in case. Do not lose your voting card. You cannot get another one this evening. Motions to reconsider or rescind. A motion to reconsider can only be made by one who voted in the, on the prevailing side. A motion to reconsider is acceptable only if new information has come to light that might have caused members to vote otherwise had the information been available earlier. A motion to reconsider is not acceptable simply because many people have left. This is a parliamentary ploy and it will not be allowed. A motion to reconsider must pass by two-thirds vote by Lakeville bylaw. By past town tradition, a motion to reconsider an article can only be made once. I would like to remind everybody that no food or drink is permitted in the auditorium. 
And before we begin the special town meeting, I would like to call to your attention to those residents of Lakeville who were active in town government and who have passed away since our last town meeting. Florence M. Lewis was active in Lakeville town government. She served on the Council on Aging from 1982 to 2004. She was involved with Old Colony Elderly Services and a member of the Lakeville Cultural Council from 1993 to 1997. So let us all stand, and I'd like to ask for a moment of silence in her memory. Please remain standing after the moment of silence and honor our country by saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Started, I'd like to introduce everybody present here at the, uh, the head table, so to speak. Um, my name is Aaron Burke, for anybody that doesn't know. <coughs> Janet Tracy is our town clerk. Next to Janet is Rita Garbett, town administrator. Kay Doyle is town council. Steve Olivier is a uh, board of selectmen member. Derek Maxey is a selectman. Scott Bellevue is selectman. Next to Scott is Mike Petruzzo of the Finance Committee. Melissa Hopkins is next on the Finance Committee. Norman Oral, Finance Committee. Uh, Ted Bond, Finance Committee. Donna Winter, Finance Committee. And Cindy McRae is the Town Accountant. Now that we've started, does everybody have a copy of the, the town meeting warrant? Articles. Everybody have one? All right, good. That's a good start. Now that we have them, I seek a motion to waive the reading of the warrant. Okay, a motion has been uh, made and seconded to waive the reading of the warrant. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. We will not read the warrant. At this point, I am going to uh, seek the approval of non-resident speakers. I'll need a motion for purposes of allowing uh, attorney Michael Scott and Kevin Klein to potentially speak on one of the uh, articles. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Okay, that passes. Okay, on to Article 1. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to transfer and or appropriate from available funds certain sums of money in order to defray unanticipated costs for the fiscal year 2011 for various accounts in the general fund and the water enterprise fund and all as set forth on the document entitled article number one special town meeting transfers may 23rd 2011. second okay the motion has been made and seconded I'd like to hear from the Finance Committee, if they uh, could give us their recommendation, please. Yes, uh, by a unanimous vote, the Finance Committee has rec voted to recommend this approval of this article. Okay. you want to read the, read the transfers? Sure, if you'd like to read the transfers and then you can speak to the article. All right. This is a... Uh, Typical housekeeping transfer of funds that we do at the special town meetings, and it's to take monies from funds that haven't overspent to move it to fund to categories that have overspent or deficit spending position to make the uh, budget use accounts balance. So the first appropriation transfer appropriation from is the water enterprise fund and direct costs for the SRF loan in the amount of $37,695.02. Uh, 
Also coming from free cash is 69,000 even. And coming from unemployment account is 20,000. Coming from the reserve for further appropriation is 15,000. These monies are being transferred to the debt service interest loan for the SRF in the amount of $37,695.02. Transferred to the vote get out of district tuition and transportation in the amount of $60,000. Transferred to town office and fire station expense of $6,000. And the cable advisory committee legal fees of $3,000 and also the legal fees of $35,000. The totals of transfer. Oh, okay. Down down below is uh, so the total of all the transfers from is one hundred forty-one thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars and two cents, and the same amount going to. And then below that is the transfer from the water enterprise fund of thirty-seven thousand six ninety-five and two cents going to the general fund. Same amount. Okay. Thank you. Want me to speak to it? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> the Water Enterprise Fund is just a mechanism to take money out of the Enterprise Fund, move it to the general fund so we can pay the debt service on that loan. This is typical of how that debt service will be paid going forward in the future, so you'll see this again. The free cash, we have 269000 right now that hasn't been certified, but that's the number the town accountants work with for FY10, so we decided to take 69,000 out of that. The unemployment account, we have 25,000 left in that account, and we're using about 1,500 a month. We have a couple more months left for this fiscal year, so we can we feel comfortable using 20,000 out of that account. The reserve for further appropriation, 15,000. That's an old reserve amount from a bond premium that we had, but we never appropriated it. So, and I think it's related to Ted Williams' camp at debt, so we decided to move that as well. Going to uh, the debt service for the SRF loan, I talked about that. Vote get out of district tuition and transportation has to do with students that go to Bristol Aggie and also one that goes to Norfolk County Aggie. The town office and fire station expenses for basically fuel, the, over the additional cost for fuel this year. The cable advisory committee legal fees, the three thousand. We budgeted five thousand for two years because we were anticipating negotiating that contract this year. But the activity f has moved quicker than the budget, so we've actually spent eight thousand dollars, which means we'll have we'll be spending less money next year because we budgeted five for each year. The legal fees, the thirty-five thousand, has to do with a couple of things. One of them has to do uh, with Cisco. The amount of 12,000 of the big drivers, and another one was a uh, clock shore home that we had to demolish. That ended up costing us about 15,000. The rest of it is just regular activity. Okay, thank you. This needs to pass by a majority vote, and I don't see anybody lining up to talk to uh, talk to this. So I think I. Oh, wait a second. Hi, my name is Keiko Oral, Crooked Lane. Um, I just had a question about the legal fees. Um, I'm wondering if the, the Cisco, the 12,000 for Cisco and um, the Clark Shore home demolishment or demolition, um, those were all approved by the selectmen or who, who authorized the, the use, the overage of the legal fees? Well, when we budget the legal fee account, it's that and the snow and ice account is typically budgeted at an amount that's somewhat lower than you actually incur. Um, we budgeted the legal f account to we, we reduced it down to thirty thousand. It used to be at forty, but in most years it overran the forty thousand. So, did the selectmen authorize the use of legal? Um, effort to do the demolition, yes we did. And we also authorized the legal cost for the Cisco as well. Mr. Moderator, Bruce Mouse One. How much money did you spend to go uh, investigate? Who timed it? 
for uh, Chief Sorrell last year. How much money was that in legal fees? It's over fourteen thousand dollars. Is that correct? Is that the correct amount? Um, I don't have that information with me right now because that was something that happened in the past. This is but we can get jail. that information. And she, can, she can't say for sure. Either. Well, I got a letter say it was over fourteen thousand dollars. Okay, so you know better than anybody up here on the stage. Normally, in a uh, when someone retires, you spend that amount of money for a uh, legal fees. Mr. Goddard, can you direct your questions through me. Oh, sorry, Mr. Moderator. How much money does it normally spend uh, when someone retires for legal fees? What's that? I don't think there's any money involved, normal retirement. Okay. Any question? Well, you didn't bring that up in the financial for the legal fees earlier. It's not in this budget, it's in the previous budget. Right. It's not even, it's not in this article and it was part of last year's uh, transfers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time I think I'd like to um, call the vote. All those in favor of the transfer, a yes vote will do the transfer, a no vote will not do the transfer. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, it's unanimous.
to spend any money. And uh, we're just the Board of Selectmen to negotiate a more favorable price. That is our recommendation. Okay, thank you. Petitioner, would you like to speak? Yeah, the, um, back in, in 2007, there was a committee formed to look at all properties in the town of Lakeville, municipal properties, and other properties uh, close to the town hall now. And according to the recommendation of that group, if they said that that parcel ever came up for sale, then we should take a look at it. And that's why I uh, did a five petition to bring it up to the townspeople and let them decide if it's a good piece of property for the town to have or not. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Bill Markson, Bells Brook Road. Has anybody done a study as to what the value of this land is, or how much of it is wet, how much of it is, uh, is buildable, whether it's like the comps are, and how much uh, should be paid for it? Petitioner, would you like to would it be Board of Selectmen? Have you been involved in any of this? Would you? Okay. Would you speak to that? Okay. Um, the, the answer to that question is not to my knowledge. Um, this has been brought to the Board of Selectmen in the form of a petition. So we just had to review the petition before it came to town meeting, a special town meeting. And we're, we're not at that point yet where any of the analysis has been done of due diligence on the property. I submit it would be more appropriate to do the due diligence and then to come up with an estimate of its value than to appropriate an amount, or to, to appropriate an amount and then uh, the, the, uh, the seller knows uh, how much they have. Probably there's no other uh, buyer for the property, so we, we may well be in the driver's seat. So I think that uh, the article should be amended to, uh, to uh, initiate a study to determine how to proceed rather than to uh, go rushing headlong into spending money that we don't have. There's nobody speaking for it. I'm going to have to get a piece of paper and a pen and come up with uh, an amendment. Mr. Mother? Yes. If I may. Sure. Yeah, uh, this was brought to us by a petitioner, and uh, you know, some people think it's a good idea, some people don't think it's a good idea. I, for one, am on the fence on this, uh, but as, as a selectman, I don't feel that I should even start pursuing this without this this uh, this town meeting asking us to do that. I, for one, don't want to spend any money. I, we don't have it. However, there are some possibilities where we have additional lands, like the fire station uh, and the assessor's office, we may be able to sell in the future. So all we're asking is, do you town folks want us to at least consider looking into this uh, we're not going to purchase it, and especially not until you decide at town, uh, at the annual uh, town election, whether we're going to do this or not. Not the town election, excuse me, the uh, special yet. Uh, but it's just, do you want us to look at it or not? And it's up to you. That's not what the article says. Yeah, yeah. town council will, will explain that. Uh, thanks. The effect of this article is to place the matter on the ballot for vote to, by town meeting. It also authorizes the Board of Selectmen to proceed if the Board of Selectmen choose to do so. It does not mandate that they proceed. So they have the option, if you vote favorably on this article and then the town votes favorably on the um, ballot, to pursue this and negotiate a price, uh, as the Finance Committee noted, hopefully less than $450,000. Um, but it doesn't require them to do so. It is authorization to proceed beyond this first step. I move to amend the article to read $300,000 a place of $450,000. Mr. Marks and I, it's, uh, it's town uh, meeting tradition that amendments are submitted in writing, so I would ask if, if you could put something together that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Because it's a money article. <coughs>
this morning, it is appropriate for me to ask you to allow me to just give a little uh, contemporary background on this. Um, perhaps in a minute, I'd like to deal with, with this amendment uh, issue first. Bylaws and regulations of the town of Lakeville, Chapter 2, Town Meeting, uh, Section 12, on proposed amendments involving sums of money, the larger or largest amount shall be put to the question first, and an affirmative vote thereon shall be a negative vote on any smaller amount. So from a procedural perspective, we're going to vote the $450,000 amount first, if that passes, the amendment has failed. If it doesn't pass, we will then vote the lower amount. That is uh, what the bylaw says. By law says. Thank you. Point of information. Are you saying that there's a, there's a vote now on the larger amount? Well, is, the, is there an amendment pending? Or how does, that's not how I recollect it's been done in, in previous town meetings. Okay. I. I don't necessarily know what my recollection is of this this particular um, procedural aspect, but I am going to defer to the town bylaw, which I just read, as how I'm going to proceed with this. Well, in that case, I call the question. Well, I, I would like uh, Mr. Seamus to have the opportunity to speak. He did he did get up there before. Uh, I would draw my call. Thank you. Well, gentlemen and scholar, I just want to remind uh, the Board of Selectmen and the townspeople that in 2007, a study was put forward by Castle Booz, an architectural firm, on this, this and another question about expansion. Uh, on this parcel of land, uh, the recommendation, they, they did not recommend it at that time because of the exorbitant cost at that time, I believe. So that study has been done, and they proposed that if you were, we were going to expand uh, the town uh, office building or renovate it and expand the fire department, that uh, other steps could be taken. For, and I'm not going to get into the footprint and where that would go. Currently, uh, there is a feasibility study organized. We've had one meeting to look into these situations. So I, I don't know whether I'm saying it's a little premature to vote on this or uh, just to give you a bit of information that the feasibility study that was called by the Board of Selectmen, I think there are eight people on there, uh, most are people of great integrity except one uh, <laughs> and uh, we've only had one meeting. We're, we're, we're reviewing the Castle Boo's recommendations and uh, possibly we will come up with our own recommendation. But if, uh, if uh, it is passed at the uh, regular town meeting, then uh, what's the point? That's my point. What's the point? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I just wanted to clarify, I didn't mean the fire station. Sorry, Chief. I was actually talking about the police station. That's the, the building that we need to do something about. Just for clarification. Thank you. It's tough for me to know where the voices are coming from sometimes. Sorry. No, I, I think you may have been standing over there prior to this gentleman. Are you? Okay. Uh, again, Drew uh, The question I have, do we still have a uh, planning board? I hope so. <laughs> what is the, uh, what is the uh, I mean, I hear like 2007, but this is 2011. Now that parcel, they should have, what's their input on that? Does the selectman know anything about that? On the planning board, are they aware of this? Mr. Moderator? 
This is very soon in the whole process. Uh, it's The town's not in the real estate business. Obviously, tonight it seems like we are. Uh, but this is one of those things where something is on the market. And before the planning board, I mean, we don't know anything about the environmental issues. We don't know anything about the 21Es, anything about the septics, any of that. Uh, but the point is, do we even want to consider it? I, uh, I hear so often how we should have bought the property to the left of the town hall. And, you know, it's a shame that we didn't buy that. All this is an opportunity to just look at it, see if it's something that does work for the town. And yes, every, if this board here, if this group here decides we should do this, then we'll look into it. Absolutely no commitment to purchase. Uh, so as far as the planning board and all the others, they haven't really had any input in this because we wanted your permission first. All right, so if I understand only because it was made that it's up to the people to make investment, but I don't think we're into investing, uh, you know, spending our money. But what you're saying is this is not, if it's approved, it's only, uh, it's not approving to buy it. Is that correct? Correct. All this board will be doing is giving us the authority to at least entertain uh, purchase and sale with this and then to go to the ballot question and get permission to buy it from the, from the voters. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, Keiko Oral. Um, my question is, if, this proper, if these properties have a back taxes already owed to the town, could the town just wait until those properties are our properties anyway? rather than purchasing them? Absolutely. I believe it's in tax title now. It's going to be in tax title now. We'll see. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Marshall? Why, I'm directing this question to the selectmen. Why do we need to state the sum of money if all we're doing is authorizing the board to discuss the matter and to, to uh, come up with a proposal or a proposed purchase and sale agreement? We need, no, we need, need no money at this time to have a uh, committee study it or to have the board study it. And therefore, I would recommend that the article be uh, amended in some form. Yeah. Uh, or defeated and uh, oh, I actually have to get another form without the money attached. Yeah. You Thank you. Answer that? Okay. okay. <clears throat> because there's money on this article, and if this gets voted in, you give the permission to the selectmen at this point, and then you'd have to go to a ballot vote to go for two and a half override. If that was to occur, then you're pretty much giving the selectmen permission to go out and buy that property for the amount stated here. You're saying if we pass this, we're, give, we're authorizing them to go to the amount for the amount stated here? You, you, you are, this is a two-step process. One is with this particular vote. The second step is to go for a ballot vote for a debt exclusion to <coughs> have that right. Yeah, we're going to have to do a debt exclusion anyway because we haven't got the money. Mm -hmm. That exclusion is distinct from a two and a half override, as I understand it. But if we if we come up with an offer from the owners of the property to sell it to the town, then we can go to a vote and, uh, and we, can, uh, we can do the same thing. So I don't see what we're saving. I think, we, I think all we're doing is showing our cards. And you just hit it on the head. This we don't have the money to pay for it out of the operation budget. Otherwise, you, you would be in a better position to do the negotiating. But because you need to go for a debt exclusion, you have to name something. You have to go after something. Yeah, but we don't. What's the point of going for a debt exclusion until we know what the price is? What has has the has the property been put on the market? It has. And what price has it been listed for? Five hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, and it's how many five acres? More or less? Yeah, more or less. How it's, much of it is wet? Does it's almost know? six. It's three parcels, one being the biggest being five something. And uh, how much of it is wet? Will it uh, hurt? You've asked that question already. We don't know. <laughs> we haven't done any due diligence on the wetness or uh, the 21 on the property. Uh, from, uh, from what I understand, that's not the greatest perking property in the world. All along that, that area of the town. <coughs> Yes. 
also is in proximity to, uh, to did I hear someone mention town wells? It'd be difficult to put a septic system. Well, there's town water that goes in front of that property now. There's a line that goes all the way to. Are there any town wells nearby? Did I? No. A pond, it's a water, drinking water. Well, I still think that uh, it's ill-advised to uh, say to some of money that we can study this perfectly well without stating the sum of money in the article and then when the, when the time comes, we can take the necessary steps to buy the property if that's what we decide we want to do. And I so where it's the town to do. Thank you. Sir, would you like to speak? Yes, Paul Colucci. Um, I just want to say, anybody that knows me, I've been against buying almost every piece of property we bought in town since I've been in the town with them. Um, but there's something in real estate, around these meetings, thrown out all the time is once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime. There are truly few things that are only once in a lifetime, and that's your buddy's property coming up for sale. So it's on the market now. If somebody's going to buy it, a strip plaza or something there, as the selectman stated earlier, this would be to expand the town hall eventually, which will allow the assessors to move over, that will allow the police department to move over, Hopefully they'd be responsible, sell those two pieces of property, which would offset the cost that they're going to spend for now. So even though I've never supported buying any property in the town, because I don't believe the town should be in the land uh, acquisition business, I do believe that this is truly a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and we need to seriously at least give them the authority to take a look at it and uh, see if it's going to work out for our needs. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's buying commercial property right now. I know. <laughs> Sir, some final thoughts? Uh, Roger Porno, Elvis Pond Drive. Um, everybody talking here. I just thought about how, how old was the building? 60, 70, 80 years old? I'm sure the building codes were not what they are today, just because they have buildings on one property today, doesn't mean you can build anything, even if it's a town building on that property. This all has to be more research, I think. I think everybody jumping into this too much, especially with the money value. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. At this point, um, I need to inform the town meeting that this requires a two-thirds vote to pass. We're going to vote on the motion for the sum of $450,000. So I have um, my counter, I see one. Where are the other ones? Who else is counting? Could you stand up? Oh, all right, there he is. <laughs> We're gonna use the blue cards. So anybody that's in favor of purchasing the land, please raise your blue card and hold it up so the counters can count you. your blue card.
has been defeated. Now we're going to vote the amendment, uh, the amended number of $300,000, which we can discuss. I'd like to uh, withdraw the amendment and uh, substitute an amendment that uh, a committee be uh, established to study the issue. I, I think it's more appropriate that no amount be stated. So, uh, I would second the motion in a sense. I'll defer to town council to see what's the appropriate way to proceed. I'm not opposed to the concept of purchasing the property. I'm opposed to the method. Okay. Just, uh, we'll just take a minute and, and let her take a quick look. And Mr. Marshall, if you just want to hang on for a second, we'll move uh, All I wanted was to say is what were the, what were the numbers of the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have read that. Um, it was 62 for and 53 against. We have an amendment on, on the floor, and we can either vote the amendment, but he has requested that it be withdrawn, so now we have to vote to withdraw it. And then if he would like to make a further amendment after we've taken care of this one, we can deal with that. But we've got to do these in order or we'll get lost. I move to amend the amendment to, uh, with, to uh, strike any amount from the, uh, from the amendment. So we can vote on the amendment, and then we can vote on the amendment to the amendment. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean, we're all lost now. <laughs> or I am, at least. Um, no, what I'm suggesting, if you'd like me to clarify, is that uh, if we defeat the amendment, there's an amendment pending to, uh, to, to uh, authorize the board to, to negotiate, but with no amount of state, to study and negotiate. Right now, there has been an amendment um, motion made and seconded for purposes of, of having the $450,000 figure change to $300,000. I understand that. And you, you came up and said you'd like to withdraw that. Well, no, well, I, I so now that we need to. That's awkward, and you'd rather do it another way. So what I'm suggesting is I put an amendment out to what's before the county <laughs> presently. Uh, right, but, but there, there's been, in, in, in town meetings of, of Lakeville, we typically have one amendment, we dispose of that one amendment before we make another one. Because you start getting amendments on amendments, it becomes... Well, we dispose of the, the, the uh, we only have one. We're in the same position that we were before the, the, uh, the, the article was defeated. We have a, an article before the, uh, before the town. And we have I, this is an interesting conversation, perhaps, over coffee for, for us to have. <laughs> but got I, don't, coffee? I don't want to necessarily bore the, the uh, town meeting with this. I think from a procedural perspective, I just spoke with town council related to this, and, and I'd like to just handle this by um, voting your withdrawal, and then if you would like right. to make that's an amendment, we'll, we'll that's proceed fine. that way. That's Thank fine. you. Good and <clears throat> Second. Okay. Okay, this is a majority vote. All those in favor of the withdrawal of the motion to have the figure not exceed $300,000 signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, it sounds like the ayes have it. So the uh, motion to withdraw passes by majority vote. I move to amend the article to read one dollar. Unless town council think that's a terrible idea. I, I just think it's easier than, uh, than going through all the language and, and changing it. What was the money article? <coughs> Something else. Do we have a second for that? Well, 
But wait a minute, I would draw in any hearing from town council. I'd rather hear from town council first before we get into the position now to vote on Well, if somebody's going to second it, maybe we'll hear from town council. I don't know as if this is appropriate to. Okay. The motion to amend was withdrawn. If you move now to essentially move to amend again, you're going to require, well, you're potentially going to require the town to go to a debt exclusion process for the purpose of one dollar. If you're suggesting oh, the, okay. I understand. It's just something to consider. Well, uh, Councillor, what do we have to do to, uh, to get the town to study this and to come up with uh, a, a negotiated price that we can vote on at some future day. Uh, Mr. Moxon, Mr. Moderator. Yeah, and that's that's what the uh, the, the selectmen are in the process right now. Uh, my brother selectman uh, Steve Olivier here is actually part of a feasibility study on these buildings. This is just because this came up kind of early. He'd love to have more time, so this will allow him to have more time to look at that property. In that case, I move to table the motion. Mr. Moderator, I move to take no action on this. <laughs> okay. A motion has been made and seconded to table the motion to um, to purchase this property for a dollar, a bargain. Um, so that has been seconded. We're going to table this. Um, it's not debatable. It requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, so we're going to have to count it. All those in favor of tabling this, please raise your blue card. been tabled. Just a moderator, I'd like to ask if that now means the selectmen do not have the authority to pursue looking into this land or talking to the sellers or... That is correct. They're, they're not authorized. Well, no. I'll let, let them speak. I forget I'm not supposed to say anything. So keep the I'll meeting give, going. I'll give it a try. Town council. But the selectmen themselves can look into this. We could fund this through the operation budget or we could bring this back to the town meeting ourselves. Okay, on to Article 3. My name is Carol Tolles. I'm from 57 Long Point Road in Lakeville. And this is on Island Terrace. It is a motion under petition Article 3, moved to transfer from the Board of Selectmen for the purposes set forth in General Law, Chapter 40, Section 8C, to the Board of Selectmen for the purposes of conveyance, the care, custody, and control of a parcel of land containing one acre, more or less, which land is a portion of the two town-owned properties located at Long Point Road, identified by the assessors as parcels 71-1-1-1, 71-1-1-1, 71-1-1-1, 71-1-1-1, 71-1-1-1, 
and 71-1-1-2, and described in a deed filed with the Plymouth Registry District of the Land Court as document number 508-923, and recorded with the registry in book 22356, page 215, and in a deed filed with the Plymouth Registry District of the Land Court as document number 543809, and authorized the selectmen to convey said parcel on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the selectmen deem appropriate, and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the General Council, excuse me, the General Court for approval of such conveyance under Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, if such approval is deemed by the Board of Selectmen to be needed. I have a second. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Finance Committee, what is uh, your opinion on this? Uh, by a unanimous vote, we voted to recommend approval of this article. Finance Committee voted to recommend approval of the article. Would you like to speak to the article, please? Yes, this article is a request from Island Terrace to purchase approximately one acre of property to use as a leaching field for the Island Terrace nursing home at 57 Long Point Road. We're requesting this due to the fact that the site is a very, very sensitive, uh, is in a sensitive area. We are surrounded by a drinking water supply on one side and cranberry bogs on the other. We have 77 clients who live with us and 116 people who take care of them. One of the, the main reason that we are requesting this is to get treated water from the facility as far away from the public drinking water supplies and wells as possible. Sir, would you like to address town meeting? Mr. Moderator, Emory Oral Chairman, Lakeville Conservation Commission. Uh, the property, uh, it's the Betty's Neck property, is actually controlled by the Lakeville Conservation Commission, uh, not the Board of Selectmen, it's owned by the town. Uh, and at our last meeting, uh, Carol came before us and explained the situation, and we were unable to even get to a vote as to a united opinion because there's so much inf more information that's needed on this. There are many, many issues and hurdles that will be have to be be uh, be jumped over to get this done. Uh, there's a conservation restriction on that property held by uh, the Department of uh, Fisheries and Wildlife, and uh, that state department will absolutely not give up that conservation restriction on the parcel unless there is a net gain for fisheries and wildlife. Uh, whether improvements to the peach barn will satisfy them or it will require conservation restrictions on another piece of property or whatever, fisheries and wildlife will have to have a net gain or they won't even entertain this and it will be, have to be passed by Lightful Conservation Commission as well. There may be legalities involved over whether this property can even be sold. Uh, but nonetheless, we were unable to come to a united decision, so I have no actual recommendation. I won't speak to my personal opinion to it. Uh, just so that the townspeople know, this is only the first step. Uh, it does not make it a done deal in any, by any means. It's a long road to go down, and, uh, you know, if it happens, it, it, you know, it'll be okay, I guess, whatever happens, but uh, it's still, this is just the first step on a long road. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Martin? I, I'm curious. Uh, I, I see the information about the, uh, the toilets. Uh, it's my understanding that I mean, the information here that the toilets presently uh, in operation require five gallons per flush, and that the new toilets uh, that they've installed, on which they've installed three, I use three ounces per flush. I am curious, because it's my understanding that modern toilets are one gallon per flush. 
so we can reduce uh, the uh, the effluent by uh, by percent by just changing the kinds of toilets. But I, I, my my question to uh, the petitioner is whether or not if this goes forward that all of the, whether or not all of the toilets would be converted to these wireless toilets. I am Kevin Klein from the Folk Grand Group. Um, Island Terrace currently has an ECO administrative consent order with the DEP that requires wastewater treatment. It requires a wastewater treatment plant with groundwater discharge. Island Terrace has spent a lot of time looking into the use of composting toilets. At this time, the DEP has said if the discharge is sited on the island, in proximity to the public water supply, surface water supply, and in proximity to their own on-site public water supply well, the composting toilets are not the solution that they will accept. If we can get it further away to a less sensitive area, the option of using composting toilets with gray water treatment again becomes a possibility. Thank you. I'm now I have no objections to um, what they want, but the island there is passing on. I just wonder why the hundred thousand dollars has to go to one project with the town, <coughs> excuse me, the town having so many budget problems in many, many uh, areas. Steve will be especially glad to know that my attorney told me that there was no way that I had any say whatsoever over how the town spent the money. <laughs> this, this is, as uh, Emery pointed out, the first step in a long road. There's many participants or partners in this whole thing, and everybody has to come to an agreement in order for this to move forward. It's, I just found out it's the uh, Conservation Commission that has control of it. With, for the EEAC, you have the state legislators who are going to have to propose this for legislation to be approved. You have the proponent who's looking to get some satisfaction with their current situation. You have the town of Lakeville as well. So, and as Emery pointed out, and the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife too, who also holds the conservation restriction, and they're going to want something in return probably in a net gain situation. So that leads me to think that either the proponent or the town's going to have to come up with something to substitute for this as a swap. So it's a long road ahead. It's never been done before. It's a, a huge challenge. But I think because the person that the DEP is putting on final terrace, and I, I don't think anybody in this room wants to see that business close down and have those folks have to move to somewhere else because it's a, it's a fantastic facility. Um, I think everybody's going to have to work their hardest to make this to see this come through. This particular article is just going to allow us to move forward, so we can start the petition process ourselves with the legislators. Thank you, Mr. Markson. Yeah, I don't think Mr. Klein answered my question. My question was: If this article is passed, does that mean that the Island Terrace will will install the uh, virus toilets? And if not, will they install the one gallon per flush toilets in place of the five gallons per flush toilets? Somebody like to answer that question? So yes or no. It's that. a bit tangential, but I'll allow it. It's on the um, fringe of the motion itself. Island Terrace would like to continue using the composting toilet solution. If this motion passes, that still puts it out as an option for the DEP to consider. If it doesn't pass, DEP has said you're not going to use the composting toilets as your solution on the island with a discharge on the island. As to the lower water use toilets, um, as uh, I can let the owners do that, but as uh, they've been doing remodeling and everything else, they have to do it in accordance with the plumbing code, which mandates the uh, lower flow toilets. Thank you. 
Colin Chair in Lakeside Avenue. I just have a couple of questions. First of all, I'd like to say I'm concerned about the precedent that this would set um, with the town just giving up or selling, um, in this case, little bits of our property that we bought. Um, I'm very familiar with this land, and I have a question with regards to the maps. There are two red lines, if you look at the color photos. One, if I'm looking at it correctly, appears to go out to what the main field out by the peach farm. The other one goes a completely different direction, which I believe is, I guess it's land behind Long Point Road. So when you say one acre or thereabouts, where, where is the one acre? Is it a half an acre on Long Point, a half an acre in the main field? What happens if they decide to go one way? They still have, then I assume they still have the land Thank you. The acre has yet to be determined, and the reason that I put both of the locations in, actually technically right now, if you look at the maps, there are three locations, and no, we wouldn't own one, one, a half acre on one part or a half acre on another. It would be one area. Uh, and, they, and they show the locations, so the, one of them is out in the alfalfa field, the other one that is in black and white, is located over the existing parking lot for the Peach Barn. The third one is owned by the Public Trust and is out in the property behind Long Point Road. But it would be one. It would be one area. It would not be. It could not be broken up into separate areas. Thank you. But I think that's very confusing here. Um, and if we're going to buy it, I think, and we make that decision tonight, we should know what we're exactly buying, I mean, which, which property. To me, that makes a difference. Um, we're not buying anything. Well, yes, please answer Sorry. that. Yeah, we're, we're not proposing, the town is not proposing to buy anything. I apologize. Um, if we sell it, to me, though, it's important what we're selling. Right now, I don't know of any access in the area off of Long Point Road. If you sell a parcel that's in the field, personally, that makes a difference to me. And I think if, you know, people should know exactly what it is they're buying, but it doesn't sound like that's been determined yet. Furthermore, if the money is, well, and I guess that was partially clarified tonight, $100,000, if you develop the peach farm, that's just, you know, how is that going to be developed? Then it has to be maintained. What happens to that piece of property? Um, I appreciate what they're trying to do. I just, I'm just trying to look at the bigger picture here and, and the long-term ramifications of this. And, not knowing, quite frankly, what it is we're selling is concerned to me. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to point of clarification here that that hundred thousand dollars is not in the motion. And it's not anything that's on the table at this point for this motion. Thank you, sir. Yes, Robert Blutri again. Um, a couple of things. The, uh, I've heard, and I've seen from this clarification, that this will not only allow them to upgrade their existing septic system, but it will also allow them to add about 30 to 40 more additional beds. Um, so I want to know if that's in the plan, or if we'll have a restriction on any further expansion. I'd also like to find out, even though Steve just stated um, that it's, the money is not part of the petition, but it is on here and everybody knows it, uh, the petitioner said it wasn't their idea that that money went to the hundred thousand for the renovation of a bathroom, which will be an amazing bathroom, I assume. But we have other needs in the town. I think that one, we're selling it way too cheap, um, and secondly, that the money should go in the general funds so the taxpayers can decide where it's uh, best use is, and if that is the best use for it, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to address that? Yes, Island Terrace has offered $125,000 for the acre. Uh, Island Terrace does not have the right to tell the town in any way, shape, or form how to decide to use that money. As far as an addition to pay the multi-million dollar renovations, that is true. Island Terrace has, is in the process of purchasing a license to add 22 beds bringing our census from 77 to 99. Um, 
And um, if anyone would like to speak to the ACO, or Kevin, or Mike, if you'd like to speak to the ACO from the EP on that, that's fine. Um, we do have permission to go up from 12,000 gallons, and I don't have the exact figure in front of me, to 15,588. Am I correct on that, Kevin? Close. 15,880, excuse me, is what they gave us to be able to pay for all of the renovations that Island Terrace requires. Island Terrace is technically right now a number of different additions. The original building was built in 1912 as a summer home. And uh, as an example, the windows that are in that part of the building are vintage 1912. <coughs> the, other, uh, the other section was added in 1962 then 1967, and then 1985. And the entire facility needs upgrading on top of the septic system. So it isn't just the septic system, system that is at issue here. I don't believe it's a taxpayer's legal responsibility to upgrade that, though. A fair market value, I've heard, just get anywhere, a nursing home gets anywhere between four dollars and $7,000 a month for a bed. Adding the 22 beds, is a couple of weeks worth of what you're going to pay for the property. And I think we saw ourselves very short getting the uh, sold for that price on an existing to do the expansion. If it was to repair the existing septic system, I'd be more far. But if we're going to uh, two weeks of rent and we're going to give away the, the, the business to expand, it's a private business, it's a private entity, and the taxpayer shouldn't be um, supporting it. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Thank you. Um, you going to add, add to that, or so we don't necessarily need to have rebuttal back and forth. And but I mean, if you have something to add, please do. Uh, just one thing: um, the Mass DEP uh, with the Administrative Consent Agreement is allowing Island Terrace to expand the 22 beds to a total of 99 beds on the site and build a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so that has already been approved by the Mass DEP and will happen. What we're looking to do now is still build the treatment plant, but just move the leaching from the island off the island. So buying the property from the town isn't what is going to allow them to expand. They can expand anyhow. It's just in, it just enables uh, the uh, leaching area for the treated effluent to be located in a less sensitive area. Thank you. Sir, hey, would you like to address the, the group here? I would, Mr. Moderator. Frank Starrett, Six Crest Drive. Um, to the people who like, I love this handout, right? It's a little technical, certain parts of it. You know, if I can't understand it, uh, it's all, I think we're in a lot of trouble. I, I think Board of Selectmen Finance Committee, with all due respect, um, I, I believe that you're wrong. I believe that the underlying premise for this whole thing is wrong. Don't get me wrong. I like Island Terrace, okay? I think it's a pretty facility. Um, but I think the underlying premise is it's wrong for a semi-rural residential town um, to sell off conservation land. I, I, I think we're setting a very bad precedent here. And the other factor is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, that Island Terrace is a for-profit business that pays taxes. And for us to help individual companies, individual businesses, okay, and improve their profit picture by selling off conservation land, I just think is a, a, is a lousy deal. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? Yeah, I'm William Chatty. Uh, I look at things a little different. Even though it's a business, unfortunately, Lakeville cannot provide water. They've got it at the town hall now, right? They, got, they solved their problem. I, I think. Uh, also, I was that that part of uh, that we want to sell was that originally Betty's Neck, and was it un, was it under conservation land then? Does anyone know that when it was before we bought it? No, Mr. Marley. No, it was not until it was, it was purchased. Now, is the conservation uh, <coughs> conservation committee is that part of Lakeville? Like, oh, we have our own conservation. Is that the one that we referred to earlier? Yes. Now, the fish and game thing, that's something else, right? Yes. All right, that sounds like, uh, what am I going to get? Yeah, so it's, it seems to me that as a town, we should be looking at it differently to supply them, just like they were a hospital. They need water. If you can't do that, maybe what you should do is 
before the new pipeline took place. That would solve their problem. I, I think you're getting a little confused. It's not they, that they need water, they need septic no, if system. They had, if they had water, that would, now they don't need the septic system might be different. No, I think that's no, that's incorrect because the DEP doesn't want the septic system yeah. to go into, near the water supply. Yeah. Well, as they say, putting that aside, I think everybody should be on board to get, it seems like a simple thing to me. It all seems like what people are talking about is how much, who's going to get what, how much it costs. But I look at it, what the facility does, where it's been in Lakeville, and it has many other things that contribute to our rural community. I think it's, it would be the advantage of everybody to be on board to push the thing forward instead of trying to hold it back. Because looking at what they, you know, if you look at some of the stuff they've got to do with these uh, toilets, that's ridiculous. It costs a fortune. So, I mean, they got, you know, to run, a, to run a facility like that, it doesn't cost nickels and dimes. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll just say one last thing. The um, engineer it? just made, what? Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell sometimes where the voice is in. You're not really close enough to the mic in my view to think it was you, but go. Testing. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the engineer just made my point. It, I thought, and a lot of people are uh, in the impression that they needed this land to do the septic. The engineer just stated they can do it with or without us doing this. Why would we consider taking a piece of land out of conservation restriction if it's not their last only option? Um, if they can do it with or without us, then why are we, if they're going to do it no matter what, and they have the permits and the approvals, I don't see any reason that we take this off. There must be a financial uh, something for them that they, that they waited this long and willing to do this. So they got to be more to it than we're hearing. So we were just told by their engineer they can do it with or without us. So why are we going to start a precedent taking land out of a conservation restriction for something that they really don't need? Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I, I don't want to be misunderstood here. I, I'm not necessarily against this nor am I for it necessarily, but I, I wanted to state that it's my understanding that Island Terrace runs a, uh, a, a wonderful uh, nursing home facility, and uh, it's been my experience. I had to put my father in a nursing home, so I know something about them, and I think that uh, we need to support a facility like this in town. My concern is if, they, if, if we uh, allow this to go forward, is it going to reduce the effluent that's going into the soil in that area? And it is not, I haven't yet been persuaded that this is the case. I, I'm not concerned, I think the price is reasonable because it, it's, all, it's my understanding that anything that goes there is going to be below the ground. It's not going to be an above ground thing. It's used to the property that, uh, that uh, is benign. So uh, I just wanted to, people who may listen to my previous words to understand that that's how I felt about it. Thank you. Mr. Moderator. Okay. Yep. This is why we're not in the real estate business. But the, I think the biggest issue the gentleman raised earlier was with the water. Uh, there is no town water there. However, there is a, a private well that's designated as public that they use to service the property. And I believe it's a 400 foot diameter circle on that that has to stay protected. Uh, so you can't have any septics within any, re any reasonable part of that area. Uh, however, I think the, the applicant's petitioner is just trying to come up with some solution that they could say sustainable, especially in this economy. Uh, I'm not sure if this should be the property for them or not. I think that they're just asking if we would allow them to at least pursue it further and see if, because it has to go through state legislation as well as DEP, as well as conservation, everybody else. But they just wanted to know if they could get their blessing and go one step further. That's why they're here tonight. Thank you. Sir, would you like to address us? Yes, Dave Piasecki, uh, Old Main Street. Uh, I'm kind of disgusted with the town, to be honest with you. I mean, we, not only do we uh, prevent any businesses from coming into town because we want to maintain our rural residential flavor, but we don't even permit businesses that are very, very successful in the town. Yeah, they make money, Bob. I hope they do make money. Any business you are in would like to make money also. Uh, they do a tremendous service for the town. Uh, they're not asking for, this is conservation land that's being used for nothing. Think of it this way, if nothing else, if it's in the alfalfa field, the alfalfa will grow like crazy. Well, not the alfalfa field. I mean, it hasn't gone, we're asking for permission, we're at, allowing them, if we vote for this, uh, to go ahead 
nothing's been sold, nothing's been bought, nothing's been finished. Uh, we don't want to come back after we vote to revoke against our vote as we did with the last article. Uh, can we just let a business go in business, be successful, make some money, provide a service, and, and uh, be an asset to the town of Lakeville rather than to boot everyone out of the town because we want to be what? What do we want to be? Rural residential broke. I mean, we can't do any of these things because we can't pay for anything. We keep all the pay for anything. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? I just want to reiterate this and make it perfectly clear. The $125,000 that was proposed initially on a piece of paper but never made it to the motion is not on the table. If the town of Lakeville with the Division of Fishery, Wildlife, and Conservation Commission and the state legislators and whoever else needs to get involved in, to get to a negotiated conclusion, that number is not going to be presented. It's going to, it could be something else further from that. Okay. Thank you. Um, quickly. When, quickly. When, when would the number be determined? That depends. I mean, if... Why does it depend? It, well, if the Division of Fishery and Wildlife says to the town of Lakeville, you know that land you have on Howard Road, the rest of it, I want it to go into conservation restriction in order to make this happen. That's a lot of land there um, that we, we could get probably 5000 per acre to put in conservation restriction ourselves. So there are, there's a whole host of things. The state legislator, the state may say, you're going to pay us because we're the ones who got involved with the... Uh, um, broke in that deal for Betty's next week. I, we have no idea what, what folks are going to come forward with. Well, do we have the right to decide later on, or have we committed ourselves at this time? Absolutely, you have the right to do it. I mean, it, you're just, okay, if you so vote for this, so giving us permission to move forward on it, we'd have to come back to town meeting again, whatever the deal was. Thank you. Sir? Mr. Moderator, Nelson Pratt, Captain Zweig. Um, maybe I miss wasn't paying attention when the article was read because I was trying to read along with what was in print here. But what exactly are we voting on here? Are we are we just voting for the process to go forward through some due diligence with the conservation and various state bodies? Or are we actually voting to potentially sell this property even though we don't know the amount? I, I, I'm, I'm really confused as to what we're voting on when we're just about to vote for something. I, sure. You, uh, I think we'll, Town Council can address that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to make clear, the article was drafted by the petitioner, and when we looked at it, we realized that it needed to be revised because there are so many legal steps involved in this process. So the motion that is on the floor right now is uh, different, but within the subject matter of what was noticed to everyone in the article. So I'm just going to read the motion again, just so everyone can hear it before they, they vote, if that's all right. What was moved was to transfer from the Board of Selectmen for the purposes set forth in General Laws Chapter 40, Section 8C, to the Board of Selectmen for the purposes of conveyance, the care and custody and control of a parcel of land containing one acre more or less, which land is a portion of the two town acre properties located at Long Point Road, identified by the assessors as parcel 7111 and 7112, and described in a deed filed with the Plymouth Registry District of the Land Court as document number 508923, and recorded with the registry in book 22356, page 215, and in a deed filed with Plymouth, Plymouth Registry District of the Land Court as document 543A09, and authorized the selectmen to convey said parcel on such terms and conditions and for such consideration as the selectmen deem appropriate, and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the general court for approval of such conveyance under Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, if such approval is deemed by the Board of Selectmen to be needed. Hopefully that has answered your question. There's a lot of moving parts to this, but I think that was, hopefully that's clear. I, I think it is, but will it require a second vote once all the details have been worked out? Or 
or are we just con uh, allowing the selectmen to convey and or whatever that word means, transfer a cell for some unknown amount of money and we'll never revisit this again at a town meeting for Thank you. by town council it actually does give us the power to convey based off of what the selectmen deem appropriate but we can choose to bring it back to town meeting where this is worded that's that's your answer can choose i don't know if you like it maybe we'll choose maybe we won't choose <laughs> well, when, once I, we vote on this tonight is it whatever the outcome of that vote is I, I guess I would ask the selectmen, would, would you bring this forward once all the details are worked out for a second vote, or would you just, I, are we giving you the authority to do it, and that's that? I don't speak for myself, but I feel that way, that it should be brought back to the townspeople so that they can vote on it again. Is that, uh, okay, that's you, Steve, I guess I would ask that's Eric. That's me, yes, yeah, Steve. <laughs> uh, maybe ask Eric and Scott, would, would you commit to doing that tonight, or is that out of order? Actually, I'd like to ask town council if this can be amended to include that. She says I don't need it. However, this could take five years, and these three gentlemen might not be sitting here in five years. So, that was my so, so, Nelson, what you're asking is you would. Uh, like to at another town meeting know exact or uh, get permission for the actual sale price is that we ask I think it's only reasonable to to suggest that once the details whatever they may end, may end up being as you think every five years from now uh, presented to the town at that point in time for approval or not approval we're, it seems like we're doing something tonight that we really don't know where we're walking into here and, and we're um, I just talked to town council about the select and bringing back this motion ourselves and we could word it that way so that the townspeople would vote on the, the actual deal. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, thank you, Frank Sterry, Chris Drive. I, I just some clarification here, Mr. Moderator, and, and to the selectmen. You mean that an hour ago you handed out pieces of paper here and the Article 3 here, and you raised the issue to vote on Article 3, and what was read was something entirely different. Now, we totally switched forces. Article 3 here really should have been withdrawn and a new article substituted. I mean, there's a little slight of hand going on. What's going on? Well, to bring you back to the beginning of this, this article was read by a petitioner. They signed, they got 100, over 100 signatures to get to this town warrant. So they have every right to read their petition in front of the townspeople and have the vote on it. And we're just working through the details right now, just like you are. So, so Article 3 here, as printed, is totally null and void and worthless? But only if you vote on it. All right, I give up. What are we voting on? The one that was read. Yeah. The so motion that was presented by the petitioner is what we're voting on. So what town council just But he didn't read this, so it's null and void, right? The, the article was, was put on the warrant for purposes of notifying you related to what would be in the discussion. But what you're actually voting on is always presented at town meeting in the form of a motion. Boy, uh, this is some way to do business. You, you, you know, it's like bait and switch, right? You tell them one thing and, and then all of a sudden we switch. It should have been printed here. You know? Shouldn't it? I mean, so that's, that's a personal opinion. That it's, it's, I appreciate it, but it's I don't have an answer. Uh, Mr. Marshall? Uh, Bob okay. Marshall from Barster Street. I move to amend this article so that this article will be brought back to a future town meeting for final disposition. Second. We just need a second here, Bob.
Okay. We have uh, a motion to amend the Article 3 motion by adding uh, at the end of that paragraph, or run on sentence if it is one, um, uh, and further that the prior to the disposition of the property, the article be brought back to a future town meeting for final disposition. So in essence what that means is if we vote yes to amend, this will have to come back in front of town meeting before the transaction can occur. Does anybody want to speak to the amendment? No? Okay. We got a second. Is it related to the amendment? No, but if you just we'll, we'll deal with that after after we have the amendment, I'll let you speak on that. But we just got to get through the amendment first. My understanding that we, if we vote on the amendment, the article passes as amended. No, I think it's uh, we'll need to vote the amendment because if the amendment fails, the the main motion will will survive and then be voted on. We have to vote the amendment. So we have to have two votes. Correct. Okay, that's not the procedure that has been done in the past by your predecessor. Yes, it is. I stand corrected, or I stand <laughs> contradicted, at least. <laughs> this is standard, right? Okay, so this is a majority vote. Um, anybody has any comments related to this? Um, they can say, but if not, we'll, we'll prepare the vote. I don't need it countered, it's just a majority vote. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so the amendment passes. So now we can move back to the original motion um, with that amendment. And ma'am, would you like to address the town meeting? Am I correct? When you just read the article to us, I believe you referred to two pieces of property. I thought you said two. The woman who was the petitioner specifically told me two colored maps and a black and white map. That's three. I just think this is awfully vague. We don't, I'm not sure what we're selling. For what amount? More or less an acre? How much more? How much less? That just seems to be, it's too vague. And again, you referred to two, so which one do I get rid of? Which, am, I, am I misunderstanding something here? No, no, I think your, your question is clear. We're just waiting for someone to, to answer it. Mr. Sir? Moderator, my name is Mike Scott. Um, we're proposing three potential sites for the infiltration galleries. Uh, two of them are on one parcel to North of Island Creek and one is on a parcel south of Island Creek. So there's two parcels in question that are possible um, sales to Island Creek. One would have two sites, one would have one site. Okay. So, you, so you see three sites on those maps. Okay. And those are just three options for location for infiltration galleries. Two of the options are, are would be hosted on one piece of property and the other, the third option would be hosted on a second piece of property. So two properties, but three sites. Again, I just think this is awfully vague. Thank you. It was suggested I explain more or less than one acre. Um, the, the issue here is we don't know exactly how much is going to be needed for infiltration galleries. It could be a little bit more or it could be a little bit less here in one acre. Thank you. Okay. At this point, I think we can vote this. Uh, this is going to require a two-thirds vote, so we're going to use the counters. We're going to use our blue cards. So everybody that is in favor of the motion as amended, please raise your blue card.
16. I hear it's 16. What was the other one? cards down. And all those opposed, please raise your blue cards. Passes uh, 106 to 18. Mr. Moderator, this is the last article out of the number four. I move that the town vote to transfer the care, custody, and control of the 10 acre parcel described below from the Board of Selectmen for Recreational Purposes to the Board of Selectmen for Conservation Purposes. And for the purpose of conveying a conservation restriction and or a declaration of restrictions thereon, and further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to convey to a governmental body or to a non-profit charitable corporation or foundation a perpetual conservation restriction and or a declaration of restrictions encumbering a portion of the parcel of land known as the Ted Williams Camp, and described in a deed recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 7228, page 61 which portion to be encumbered contains 10 acres more or less and is shown approximately on a, pan, on a plan entitled Ted Williams Camp Conservation Plan on file with the town clerk. On such terms and conditions and for such consideration which may be nominal consideration as the board of selectmen deem appropriate or take any other action relative thereto. Thank you. Finance Committee, the recommendation? Uh, by unanimous vote, Finance Committee vote to recommend Finance Committee voted to recommend unanimously. Derek, would you like to speak to this? Yeah, I'll give you the one word answer. Turtles. And that's where we're at. Uh, but I'd like to actually have the Park Department, if the fire chief's still here, or speak to this. Uh, this is part of his board, if I could defer that to him. Here, the actual pond, this blue pond right here. 
I'm trying to figure out where this is. I, I walked this back there, so I'm kind of familiar with the grammar bit, but I'm trying to figure out, is this portion of the end here? Is this, this the bottom? Can anybody yes. clarify? Yeah. Yeah, that is the that is, I believe, the edge of the pond. Okay. Yes. And does that anywhere come near where kind of that public access to the pond is? The former St. Williams Camp Beach. No. Okay. Thank you. You beat him to it. He was coming down with your jump arm. No, that's okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Moderator, and uh, to the town's folks, uh, here's a piece of property that was deemed recreational always. And someone comes along and says, You have turtles on the property. And the town has spent $30,000 of taxpayers' money working on agreements with National Heritage. My understanding is the town did a sweep of the area and said they found no turtles. Now, could there be a turtle there? Possibly. But none were found. We spent $30,000. We're suggesting we take land that is deemed recreation only and do a conservation restriction. It's ridiculous. I wonder why people don't want to build in the town this was a builder or a cranberry grower, who's to say that you just can't plant turtles, that you can say there's turtles on the property? None were found. Tell National Heritage, drop dead. Do what you want with the town. Do what you want with the Ted Williams camp. We paid tens of thousands of dollars for that property. Don't let someone put restrictions on it that are not needed. Tell them to drop dead. Vote it down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well on that note. Oh. Yes. Good luck telling Natural Heritage to drop dead. Uh, conservation restriction, that doesn't mean you have can't have passive enjoyment on that property. Hiking trails and so on and so forth. It's a beautiful piece of property, doesn't need to be all developed. And if you don't do this, you might be doing a restoration on that property you just cleared. Thank you. Thank you. This motion requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, seeing no one else at the microphones, I'm going to assume that we're ready to vote on it. So anybody who is in favor of this, please raise your blue card. Passes 88 to 15. Mr. Moderator, move we adjourn. Second. All right. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Joe Singers, can you come up to the stage? Yes, I can.